Stephen Rone, a prominent Connecticut attorney and a recognized expert on health care law, died on April 30th. The cause was coronavirus. In addition to working as a partner at the firm Mirtha Kalina, Rone served as a fellow of the American Health Lawyers Association, as chairman of the board for the Connecticut Hospital Association, and as general counsel to the Connecticut Association of Healthcare Facilities. He was also an adjunct professor at Quinnipiac University. Born to a Jewish family in Hungary in 1936, he fled with his parents to the United States as that country entered into alliance with Hitler and started to introduce anti-Semitic laws. They settled in the Bronx, where his parents eventually ran a small grocery. Stephen thrived in his new country. He loved America's sports, and he leapt at its educational opportunities. He credited the Bronx High School of Science, where he ran track, with helping him realize the American dream. From Bronx Science, he went on to Columbia University and then to Yale for law school, and New Haven became his home thereafter. Stephen Rone was my uncle. On his last visit to Philadelphia, we went to see his alma mater's football team, the Columbia University Lions, take on the University of Pennsylvania Quakers. Attendance was light at Franklin Field, but Uncle Stephen was in his element. He believed Ivy League football was the most honest of college athletics because its players had to be good students to get there. The scholar-athlete was his ideal, and he relished the game even if the play that day was not worthy of an A grade. A man behind us could not appreciate what he was seeing. He played the armchair coach loudly, yelling about the plays that should have been called and made, endlessly pontificating on strategy. Uncle Stephen turned around to him and said, with utter cheer and sincerity, Wow, you really know a lot about the game, don't you? The cocky and irritating man went quiet. Smart, calm, steady, and good-natured. That was Stephen Rone. I could not attend his funeral. Restrictions due to the coronavirus kept it to only his immediate family, and even for them at a social distance. He is survived by his wife, his sister, and niece, two sons, their wives, and three grandchildren. Unable to pay my respects in person, I turned to the funeral home webpage and by his obituary left the comment, he was someone to admire, I'll miss him.